Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure demo. When we last left off, we managed to get access to this place with the voodoo guy, and we did so by using this picture on everything. Actually, so far this picture has been entirely useless, but we will continue to use it on everything. Like this ponytailed skull. He either died in the 1700s or the 80s. Maybe both. No. I have a feeling he's been clicked enough while he lived. Well, there's only one thing we can do, and that's use this book that we've had no use for yet. I think it'll have use at some point later, but probably not in the demo. Awaken, uh, matey? Don't think it worked. Maybe it wants a picture. I'm afraid he's not in a position to appreciate the beauty of the male human body. No, no he is not. But here is another skull. That's strange. It looks both human and ichthyoid at the same time. Itchy. What now? Fish-like. Oh, fair enough. I wouldn't touch it for a hundred bucks. Are you sure? It is just a skull, after all. What if we brought it to life? Not bringing that back to life. Oh. Here's a double-headed doll, though. There's lots of stuff to examine in this room. Hey, look. It's a double-headed doll. Let's see if we can take it. I think I'll have to ask the voodoo guy first. We probably will. Let's see if we can use the scissors on it. I'm not cutting up that doll. No way. Now here's something. Let's use Kitte on it. We all know why that's there, you sycophant. Bad kitty. That's called a tribute. Yeah, right. There's other things to look at. Like this magazine that I didn't even know was there when I first went through this. It's an issue of Bogue magazine. The headline reads, The Fishmith Look. Can we take it? I don't want it. It creeps me out. Oh, can we put the picture in it? Maybe in the next issue. Or maybe not, but there is a voodoo chest. And we all know that treasure chests have cool stuff in it. So let's have a look. It's an ancient voodoo chest. I can feel waves of eerie energy emanating from it. Well, there's only one thing for it. Let's open this eerie voodoo chest. It looks firmly locked. Oh, can we open it with the scissors? You are severely overestimating my lockpicking abilities. Is that to say that you have no lockpicking abilities? What about this? No way of telling how this thing might clash with voodoo, so no. What about the cat? Maybe the cat can open it. I heard cats absorb negative energy and transform it into the good kind, but we're not going to risk her napping on that thing. Fair enough, but there is so much more to look at, including these grapes that have been so precariously placed on the floor. Grapes. Man, I love grapes. Well, obviously, let's take them. I'll pick them up for sure, but not in the demo. Oh, so we'll pick them up outside the demo. Can the cat pick them up? Though she enjoys the occasional olive, Kid A is a carnivore. Fair enough. What about pineapples? It's a pineapple. Can we take it? Probably not. No, thanks. I'm good. What about the bananas? That ish is bananas. Also... This guy's just sat here while we've been looking around examining everything. He's very patient. Or pretty confident that we're going to talk to him eventually. I don't think I need bananas. Oh, you don't? What about a sword? Looks like a pirate sword. Can we take a pirate sword? No need for that in this day and age. Oh, what about a skull? That's an oddly shaped skull. Well, considering all the other stuff that's in here, I'm not surprised. Also, there is a strange vegetation here. I just noticed it up there. There are strange, spiky vines all over this crazy place. And I bet we can't take them. I really don't want to touch the strange, spiked vines. Can we curse the strange spike? Ah, uh, probably not. Yeah, they sure look like they crawled out of the tome. But no point in doing that. Fair enough. What about this... Is that a microwave oven? Looks like a beat-up microwave oven. Is it a voodoo microwave oven? Not touching voodoo-fied home appliances. Apparently so. Can we put the cookie in there? It doesn't need heating. Fair enough. There are more skulls, though. Hey, these are Halloween skulls. Skulls are skulls, all right? Sometimes it's hard to get the genuine article. Oh, he finally talks. Can we take them? Nah, I don't need them. Wh Ooh, a phone! Boy, that is one ancient device. Can we take it? Hello? Operator? I've never heard that one before. He might be lying there. I'm just saying, he might be lying. 
But without further ado, let's actually talk to the voodoo guy. When Buzz is finished there. Thank you, Buzz. That is quite the eclectic getup he's sporting. Actually, let's look at the throne. That looks like an authentic voodoo throne. How do you know it's authentic? No, we're already up to our necks in ancient curses. Well, we've been about the bush long enough. Let's talk to Voodoo Guy. Hello, Voodoo Guy! Uh, hi there. Greetings, Wanderer, and be welcome. Oh, thank you. Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Oh, worry not, I get my share of amnesiacs. You are now in the presence of the Voodoo Gentleman. Amnesiacs? Have we been here before? Was the password really necessary? Was that password part really necessary? It is best that I keep a low profile, lest the jackals tax me right out of town. Thus, the recommendation only access. By the way, who referred you to me? That's a good question. I, I, I actually didn't have this option, I'll just say this one. I just happened to stumble onto your door and guess the password. Darn it, I knew I should have added numbers in an underscore. Yep, you definitely should have. You definitely should have. So, what do I call you? VG? No, that sounds a little bit too gangsta. Voodoo Gentleman will do. Thanks. Fair enough. Let's ask him about voodoo. It's not the only time in a game you'll ask someone about voodoo. But in this instance, we're going to do that. The voodoo, gentlemen. You do... voodoo? I'm Buzz, by the way. Hmm. You do at least remember what you came here for, I trust. Yeah, I kinda do. Um... We could ask him that. Aren't you supposed to have an exotic accent? Oh, that's so cliche. Plus, I travel a lot. Well, we might as well just cut to the chase. Hey, we have the Necronomicon! Would you like to have a look? I remember all right. It all started when I found this book. Well, to make a long story short, I accidentally put a spell on my cat, and now she's even more annoying than she was before. A spell, huh? <laughs> How'd you go about doing that, Harry? I used this. Vaulting voodoo fixins is at the... the... The Necronomicon, in all its glory. Wanna have a look-see? No, 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 put that away. Th that thing should not be touched. Oh boy, oh boy, uh, I'm sure glad I'm not in your shoes. Um, I, I can't help you with your cat, my man. Uh, there are some things even I don't mess with. Did you notice that that thing was blinking? That book blinked. That is really creepy. Why do we have a book in our pocket that is blinking? Also, why can't Voodoo help us? But, v Voodoo? Voodoo Shmoodoo, that book is ultimate evil incarnate. Well, I for one wouldn't keep it in my pants pocket. Just saying. You are ruining Voodoo for me. I hope you're happy. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna help us with that. It seems like he can't help us with the cat either. Which is unfortunate. But, my cat. Ugh, cats. We never did get along. What are the symptoms, pray tell? She kind of started talking. Oh, look, the cat speaks. Come on, come on, see the freak. She's really unhappy with her current situation. Oh, ye gods, I've had this nightmare before. Maybe a pinch, but there's no cold sweat. How can this be? It's real, witch MD. Well, crap. Uh, I, I mean, alas! There's a lot of stuff we can talk about here. This is basically part of the plot dump, and also the first actual quest we're gonna get, beyond actually getting access to here. How could you tell that was the real Necronomicon right away? Most everyone imagines it all black, bound in human skin, bearing teeth. Only true initiates know it really kind of looks like one of those British sweater vests. You know, the ones with all the crisscross things. Yeah, why is that? I guess you sometimes just go crazy with the triangles and it just doesn't turn out as evil a design as you'd think. Still, the content more than makes up for it. Pleasant colors, though. Yep, yep, very eye-pleasing. Yep. And apparently full of evil incarnate. What kind of operation are you running here anyways? One that stays away from messing with the old ones. But it's just like a personifying curse. Those should be easier, right? You'd think. I would, uh, so 
No. Oh, and a friend of mine got kidnapped, too, you don't say. Something tells me it's also Necronomicon related. He was kidnapped while looking for the damned thing. I really wish I could help you out, but ugh. Was it a very close friend? We talked for like five minutes. So it was basically someone off the street. Aren't we all basically someone off the street? You sure are. <sighs> Don't think he's going to be helping us with that. Can he help us with anything? Well, I hope so. Otherwise, this is going to grind to a halt. Can't you at least point me in some useful direction? Hmm. There is one person that could probably be convinced to delve into this kind of mess. Yeah? I was just getting into my intriguing plot development swing, and you totally threw me off. Where was I? Oh, yeah. There's this avid student of the dark arts, an undercover intruder into the Dagon cult. A dear, dear friend of mine. A man mad and passionate enough to wade through the occult mysteries of the Necronomicon itself. What's the matter, cat got your tongue? Did he just go there? He did. Also, I like the options that you get here. This is my favorite one. Sorry, I thought you were going for a dramatic pause. But everything I'm saying is dark and morbidly fascinating, right? Oh, absolutely. Just a second ago, I really think I detected some goosebumps. Awesome! I've been working on my wording and delivery. Yeah, you have been. It's quite good. You might as well tell me about this, uh, this person. Tell me more about this dark intruder dragon guy. Dagon, not Dragon. The terrible god of the murky abysses. The one who seems to have Fishmith in his clawed grip for decades now. Man, where do you get all this stuff? I am a student of the occult stuff, my greenhorn friend. Plus Wikipedia. That's a good reference. So this Dagon's had Fishmith in his clawed grip for decades. He's the mayor then? Worse than that, if you can imagine. But this is all hearsay, since most people have been just avoiding Fishmith for years and years. I haven't talked to my friend in ages. Different cell phone carrier? That, and little to no reception. Oh. About this dark student you mentioned. I'm really on the fence here about telling you more. This could be very dangerous. And men in red shirts are notoriously unlucky. Stop reinforcing the stereotype. Is this about money? Money? <laughs> no, I always seem to end up working for free anyways. That's sort of a thing in, like, adventure games. Most people you look for, really money is the solution. Really money. It's not me like, go do this for me, or rescue this person, or go get me five items that are completely, like, useless. Also, Buzz is not happy here. Okay, fine. Don't tell me. I'll just take the Necronomicon to the next occult dude in the neighborhood and see if... What? What? You'll do no such thing. Uh, please do no such thing. Oh man. Okay, just because you're such a nice guy. Okay, tell me who it is. Please tell me who the man is. Sounds like he's our only chance. It is with great difficulty that I even utter his name. You haven't yet. Not if you keep interrupting me. Are you sure? You're ready to hear his worldly denomination spoken out loud. Hit me. I'm bracing myself. His name is Bob Olmstein. That did not hit me as much as it should have. Hmm. Bob Olmstein. You know, it really rolls off the tongue nicely. It does, but in a shuddering, awe-inducing manner. You really like this guy, don't you? I admire his resolve in the face of occult adversity. He also makes a mean margarita. Now, I clicked something quite different there the first time around, and it was a completely different dialogue. I like the attention to detail in uh, the fact that you could say different things and completely different dialogues will come through. Hmm. So you're saying I can find Bob Olmstein in Fishmouth? Well, yes, but let it be known, I am not advising you to go there. Doesn't look like I have a choice either way. Can you tell me how I can track him down once I get there? Last time we spoke, he was staying at the Finman house. Gotcha. Just remember, we don't go to Fishmouth. That's pretty ominous. You don't go to Fishmouth, because Dagon's there. And 
probably deep ones, although that's not been directly uh, stated, it's heavily implied. Also, we can only say one thing to this guy now. Bob Olmstein. Bob Olmstein. Bob Olmstein. I have no idea why he says that, but um, we need to uh, get to uh, Fishmouth. And there is a taxi just out here. Also, the woman is gone. Maybe we'll see her again. Maybe not. But for now, we actually have somewhere to go. I'm sure he'll take us there. Let's go to uh, Fishmouth. Hey, taxi. Take me to Finman House in Fishmouth. Yeah, that's real funny. Let's waste the cabbie's time with dumb jokes. No, uh, I'm serious. Take me to Fishmouth. We don't go to Fishmouth. But, but I want to go. I'll pay double. You can pay four times the fare. It ain't worth going there. You think darkum has been strange lately? Wait till you get a whiff of Fishmouth. So let's get a whiff. Money can't make me go there, friend. Them fishy folks will scare the scales off an anchovy. So... we could offer various things for it, like this cookie. Look, I have this suspicious cookie. Keep that thing away from me. Some darn hippie fed me one of those about a month ago. I was seeing tentacles and all kinds of ungodly things for a week after. You don't say. We just learned something about what that cookie does. And we still don't have a use for it. Can I interest you in an ancient cursed grimoire? Nah, already got one of those, and it's full of my wife's special occasion dresses. What about a cat? I have this talking cat. We all got our crush the bear, buddy. Amen, brother. So there's nothing we could do. Oh, wait, maybe there is something we can do. What can I do for a ride to Fishmouth? Well, I do have a family problem needs taken care of, but, uh... Man, it's a heck of a doozy, let me tell you. I'm all ears. Uh, see, this cousin of mine, Ed, married a woman out of Fishmont. Fishmont, can you believe it? Name's Azanath. Anyway, ever since they got together, every time I meet old Eddie, I get this strange feeling he's, uh, he's not himself. Always shopping for groceries, never goes to the ball game anymore, general zombie-like complexion, lack of will to go on. That's pretty common from what I understand. Oh, you unmarried folks always piling on the stereotypes. No, friend, I mean, and I know it sounds crazy. It's like she's looking at me through his eyes. Like she's the one inside, right? Whoa, okay, so where's he? Good question, buddy. I mean possession. That's crazy talk, I know, but I've seen it with my own eyes, man. Now, he ain't talking much, but from what he did say, he gets littler and littler time as himself every day. And I'm worried sick, man. Look, I don't know what your deal is, but get rid of Azanet for me, and I'll drive your butt to Fishmouth like it was nothing. Quest unlocked? Uh, I, I mean, deal. Okay, then. We have something that we need to do. What can you tell me about Ed? Name's Edward. Edward Derby. He's my cousin. Supports the tentacles. Don't care much for light beer or garlic-based toppings. Thanks, that's very insightful. What about Azanath here? Or Azanath, I think, is actually the correct pronunciation. What can you tell me about Azanath? What's there to say? She's a creepy one, that's for sure. Looking like a darn fish if I ever saw one. I've been driving cabs forever, and I never heard of anyone else called Azanath in Darkham, so there's that. Hope that'll help you. Thanks. That does actually help us. Okay, got it. So, let's go. Got a scoot. We have a quest! And we have a potential way to get to Fishmouth. But the only way we can do that is by doing this quest. To, uh, sort out the problem for, um, Ed concerning, uh, Azanath. And while I don't think I can personally solve it, mainly because there's only three screens in the game and thus I don't have access to Azanath, I think we know somebody who could. And he might be in this room right here. Maybe. Just, just call it a hunch. I mean, he may not be able to deal with an Necronomicon, but there are other things that might be solvable. Maybe. 
Look, it's worth a try, isn't it? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Well, we, we could spontaneously combust, but uh, I don't see that happening. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.